And welcome back to the Ohio Only Challenge, where we will be starting off Season 2. Last episode was the entire offseason. We were able to bring in uh, some new players in the draft, a couple in free agency, even made some trades. So before we spoil anything, if you haven't watched that, make sure you jump back and watch that last offseason so you can kind of get caught up on what happens. But today, we will be starting off by looking at the stats of the preseason and making some cuts, potentially some trades, if... There's an option available for us. But before we jump in there, a couple of announcements. I think about midweek last week, we surpassed 50 subscribers on the channel, which is kind of the first milestone, I feel like. So thank you all for joining. And if you've been watching either this series or the Cardinals series and you haven't subscribed yet, because I know most people watching are not subscribers, go ahead and tick that subscription button down below and tick the bell notification to be notified of when these videos go live. I bring you guys four videos a week, so a lot of content to come, so might as well go ahead and subscribe. The uh, second uh, announcement is that early October, I will be moving, and hopefully, if we get the place that we want, and I'm pretty sure we will be going to knock on wood, um, but when we move, again, early October, I'm going to try to make sure I have videos covered for that week or any discrepancy of internet not being hooked up when it's supposed to be. Um, but whenever we get there, again, hopefully with the one that we want, there will be a space particularly for an office for me. So no longer will we have a bedroom or a living room in the background. So granted, it's all one space currently. But uh, that is really nice. Really looking forward to it. Again, hoping it happens so far. It seems that way. But yeah, so if there's a random little bit early October that there's... Uh, a video or two missing to the normal schedule, that's probably why. But you guys can always follow me over on Twitter, linked in the description below, or you can look up Big Bear B underscore gaming. I'll tweet out if there's any uh, discrepancy that's going to happen, any uh, bumps in the normal schedule uploads. So there are those announcements. So really happy that one, finding a place with an office, and then uh, that we've passed 50 subscribers on our way to 100. I believe as I record this, we're close to 60. So on our way, but let's actually jump in and take a look about kind of what happened for us during the uh, preseason. And for us, only going one and two, but all games were pretty close. So we beat the Panthers 24 to 21, and it looks like they came back possibly a little bit in the uh, fourth, but for the most part, we had that game handled. Against the 49ers, we end up losing in overtime. So it was a good game. Looks like they kind of came back a bit more in the second half. We won the first half. They won the second half. So tied it up, went into OT, and they walked it off. And in the final week, probably, or definitely is our worst loss of the preseason, 28-17, an 11-point victory to Green Bay. It pretty much looks like that was all fourth quarter action. We just couldn't put anything on the board when our backups came in. So in total, this entire preseason, Chris LaRubio had five touchdowns, three interceptions, with a completion percentage of 60%. Ritter, solid, 70% completion, two touchdowns. That's what we need to see. Logan Woodside might end up being cut. We'll see if he's eligible for practice squad. I don't think we'll need to carry three quarterbacks if there's space to, maybe. In the running department, Josie Love led the team. Averaging four yards a carry as well. So 103 yards, 26 carries, no touchdowns though. Zeke in just one game though, most rushing touchdowns. Trey Sermon did all right with the time he was out there, 3.9 yards a carry. And unfortunately, Ben Pierce did not get much action at running back. Hopefully though, considering that I really like him, I'll try to keep him on roster. We'll see if we have the space. In the receiving game, Ray Sean Holiday led the team in receptions and yards. Uh, with a 11 catches for 155 yards and a touchdown. Noah Brown also did pretty good. So maybe makes you think, do we trade Curtis Samuel? They're about the same age, so probably actually keep Curtis Samuel <laughs> around. Uh, but uh, Curtis had 109 yards on nine catches and a touchdown. And Deguara, 105 yards, eight catches and a touchdown. Ruckert still going to start. There's no question there, but having two tight ends, is good for us. Means that we could actually go out in a two tight end set a little bit more often. Uh, Chris Olave, 87 yards on nine. Wilson had the two touchdowns, five catches, 47 yards, and then just a little bit sprinkled 
down the board. And of course, we did see Ben Pierce did have that receiving touchdown as well. On defense, Pete Warner led us in tackles with 23. And then Tyquan Lewis and Sam Hubbard led the team in tackles for a loss, both with four. And Tyquan Lewis also led the team in sacks with two. So need to try to get some more sacks this year. Uh, hopefully in the draft, we might have some edge rushers that we'll be able to bring in. No interceptions either this preseason. So not looking like we're forcing many turnovers. No, didn't force a single turnover this preseason. That needs to get better. But Sam Sloman, 8 for 8 on extra points, 2 for 3 on field goals. And now comes the unfortunate part for many off seasons, which is cutting. we got to cut some guys, move some guys to some practice squads, maybe trade some guys. Uh, but it does look like Wogan, Logan Woodside is not going to be able to be put on a practice squad. Madden does not have the uh, the veteran practice squad spots. I believe there's two, maybe two or three in real life. Um, so unfortunately, we don't have that. So he could end up being cut. Granted, I don't think any team's going to pick him up as he's a 53 overall. So if we did end up needing a backup, if Ritter or someone got hurt, we should be fine. Um, so Woodside is definitely one that I think we're just going to go ahead and make that move as he is also the oldest quarterback on roster. So we will clear up about one mil in cap space, but also have a penalty of two. So take a bit of a hit there. Now in the running back department, we have quite a few guys. And to be exact, we have seven and we don't need seven for max. I know I want to keep obviously Zeke. Trey Sermon, I think would be a solid backup, but Boone and Dokes and Warren are all ones that I don't think are going to be able to stick around. I think Warren was on the practice squad last year. I don't see him potentially getting to a spot where he could stay on a 53-man roster. So we are going to cut Michael Warren the second. Now in his place on the practice squad, I'm going to send Jared Dokes because I'm still interested in him. But I really want to keep Ben Pierce around as he's a younger option that I feel has a very similar game. So to the practice squad goes Jared Dokes. And that leaves Mike Boone, who is tied for the oldest in the running back group and is three or would be the third guy. But Josie Love played very well. So I think Mike Boone, unfortunately, even though he was one of the cover guys on the uh, announcement episode, is going to be cut again, taking a bit of a penalty. And at receiver, we have eight. I think we only need to carry six, so we need to move on from two guys. Noah Brown is 27. Cody Thompson also 27. I believe, I think we could get rid of Cody Thompson. He, I think, was a IR guy his entire first year, um, so I think I'm fine with that. Would like to have someone with a little bit more speed, and Noah Brown and KJ Hill are very similar players, but KJ Hill is a bit younger, has the potential to grow past where Noah Brown is, so I think we end up cutting Noah Brown. And that will leave us with six receivers. If we end up needing to make some space in the future, potentially trading Curtis Samuel is always an option for us. Now at tight end, we have four different tight ends, and we're not ever going to use four. The two guys at the bottom here, both 64 overall with Luke Farrell and Quinton Morris, I think we give the edge to Morris as he has better speed and catching. Run blocking, not very good, but a year younger, I think we go with the edge there. I don't think we need to cut Luke Farrell. We can move him to the practice squad for now. And now I know I have a bunch of backup offensive linemen. I brought in everyone that was possible to bring in so we can try to make sure that someone's developing. But I think Tommy Doyle is going to be cut he has lower run and pass block than both of the other guys, and he's also the older of the three. So I think Tommy Doyle is cut. And at left guard, we have two options to move around. I think Randall Brown being a 60 overall, that's an obvious one. We move him to the practice squad. Wyatt Davis, still an option to possibly be either cut or moved to the practice squad, as well as either James Hudson III or Thayer Munford. I think I might give the edge to Munford as he does have that 70 pass block, but we'll see what we end up getting down to with all of the other positions. At right tackle, 
we have four different guys, and I don't think we need that. Lindsey Watts, I want to say, is a uh, undrafted player who's better than Isaiah Prince, who's 26. So I think Isaiah Prince is a cut guy for us. We will again take on a little bit of a penalty. And I think undrafted rookie Timmy Washington also gets moved to the practice squad. Got to give the edge to Lindsey Watts. He looks like a much better player and is, I mean, is a year older, but I still think that's uh, an op. We could bring Washington back if we need him, but he'll be sent to the practice squad. At left end, we have five different guys. I think Frank Thomas is someone that we send to the practice squad, so we'll go ahead and do that. But... We still have quite a few guys, and a lot of them are all fairly close in overall uh, between uh, Jonathan Cooper with 71, Jalen Holmes, a 70, and then Tyreek Smith, a 68. I think someone like Jalen Holmes is a potential guy that we could try to trade, so we'll keep him around for now. And at DT, we have six. I think we need a max four Jonathan Hankins has lost his starting spot when we traded for Hamilton, so I think I might want to trade Jonathan Hankins, see if we could either get just some good picks or maybe some players that I haven't been able to bring in yet. But for sure, I want to have Hamilton and Togiai starting. So in terms of depth, we have three guys who are all 66 overall, and Cortez Broughton is one of the older guys. Being fairly low here, I think we go ahead and make the move and cut Broughton at safety. And I think one of the main ones we're going to do is end up cutting TJ Carey. He's the oldest at 33, and we drafted Jonathan Sapp, who's definitely going to get the start. So Carey will be cut. We'll take a little bit of a hit there. At strong safety, two very close guys here with uh, Derek Forrest being a 69 and Tyson Anderson being a 66. I think we go ahead and move Anderson to the practice squad, though. And with four players still needing to be moved on, I think we move James Wiggins to the practice squad as well. And then try to make some trades here with those players that are just kind of sitting on roster and we don't, we don't need them. So let's start with Jonathan Hankins. But what will get the job done is a future seventh. So apparently Hankins has like next to no value. And now for Jalen Holmes. Bills have semi-interest in him. They need a backup left end. Asking for a fifth round in return. And even that's not very close. It's, it's hard to get these trades in now with Madden 23. I kind of like it. But a current seven will get the job done. And for our last move, we'll be sending James Hudson III to the practice squad in favor of a Thayer Munford, who's one overall less, one year younger, has higher pass blocking, and potential to be better. So we'll send Hudson to the practice squad, and now the team is down to the 53-man roster. And let's take a look at the draft class, and on the top of the board... We have a top five projected quarterback out of Miami of Ohio and Paul Schillinger. Schillinger? Schillinger. Something like that. So this is now a make it or break it year really for Ritter because he's got some competition. A 6'3", 226-pound, 21-year-old right-handed quarterback who... Whether the window is open or closed, he's slinging it, has a beautiful spiral on all his passes, stands tall in the pocket, and is always aware of pressure. Does well to avoid sacks by throwing the ball away. Vast majority of his success comes while in the pocket. Quick, compact, throwing motion. In terms of his physical attributes, great to elite throw power as well as strength. Speed is poor to marginal, which means he has next to none. And then marginal to decent jumping, good to great change of direction, decent solid agility, marginal to decent acceleration. So definitely a pocket passer for sure. And we'll find out some of the information on him as the year goes on. But now Ritter has some serious competition that's not, you know, below a 60 <laughs> overall. So looks really solid. Also have another quarterback in the third to fourth round, Justin McLaughlin out of Ohio State. Possibly a more scramble type, at least with his size, I would think so. Being 6'1", 220, 21 years old. 
and he does have a solid to good speed with the same throw power. So we have some quarterback options, potential solid backup with Justin McLaughlin. So watch out LaRubio. There is also a potential undrafted quarterback, Darren Tennant, out of Toledo. For the running backs, two potential undrafteds, one out of Kent State and one out of Ohio State. There is a fullback option if we feel like we need another fullback. Only one tight end, Stefan Tucker out of Ohio State. And then not a whole lot of top-end offensive line talent, which is concerning. We luckily have a pretty decent, at least right side, of the offensive line. Left side is a little bit on the weaker side. Uh, but some day three options at left tackle. A uh, potential undrafted at left guard and center. Day three and potential undrafted at right guard. No right tackles. And unfortunately, not a whole lot in terms of defensive line guys. Most are potential undrafteds. There are, or there is at least, Jared Chapman out of Ohio State listed as a DT and being 6'4", 330 pounds. It's probably where he's staying. But he is a bit younger, 22 years old. In terms of his physicals, everything is locked. Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that information not here the first time you go to look. So we'll hopefully try to find some more information on Jared Chapman as time goes on. Past him on defense, a lot more of some potential undrafted and late round guys. Eric Henson, left outside linebacker out of Cincinnati, is a day three guy. There is, however, a middle linebacker, Cole Lawrence, rated, projected, I guess you should say, round one to two out of Ohio State. Another 21-year-old guy, six foot 226. So with that, I'm going to assume he's going to be covering, or is a, a pass cover guy. Can't tell because there's not much information on him, but at least someone early on we could potentially go for. Uh, right outside linebacker, potential undrafted, and then a day three corner. So doesn't look like we're going to be getting any high-end guys anytime soon. So there is Schillinger, a uh, top five, and then that middle linebacker, who is round one to two, and then the DT two to three. So we at least have some guys kind of spread around a little bit. It's opening day this week and a fresh start for every team around the league, and you'll be facing the Raiders. What's the key to victory? I feel like consistent offense for us was a problem last year. So let's go with dominating offense. Ideally, we establish a rhythm on offense, dictate the flow of the game, and get a big enough lead to make their offense one-dimensional. Obviously, every offense wants to be balanced. What's your main focus? We have a lot of really good young receivers. I think we have to see them shine. So passing game. It's a passing league, whether you're leading or trailing. Passing is the best option for yards and points. So being able to air it out is how we envision having the most success. Beat the Raiders, throw for 350 plus yards. Let's get in. Kicking off the season against the Raiders. They'll come out on offense, shotgun set. Most receivers to the bottom will fake the handoff, and their rookie quarterback will have his tight end, I believe, drop it on his first NFL pass. Rather unfortunate there for the uh, rookie quarterback here for the Raiders. They come out empty set, quick pass up top. That one's tipped around, picked off. What an awful start for this rookie quarterback. That is intercepted by Denzel Ward. And what an unfortunate start for the quarterback, but a great start for our Ohio-only Bengals here. As, Des as uh, yeah, Denzel Ward got the INT, I believe he only had one in total last year. Start the season out on offense with a one-yard run down the middle 
from Zeke, who is on a franchise tag. So hopefully try to re-sign him for longer as we go with another run, gain of three. So will bring up a third and six as we come out shotgun set. Two receivers to either side. Rookie receiver all the way at the bottom. And we'll be going to the middle, and that's a touchdown for Garrett Wilson. First drive for offense took three plays with the INT help from Denzel Ward. Will give us a 7-0 lead with a made PAT. And that is the hot start we need this year. Because like I had mentioned previous with the uh, announcement of a top five available quarterback, Desmond Ritter needs to put together a great season if he wants to convince us that he is the long-term quarterback here for this team. Irons, potentially the long-term quarterback here for the Raiders as he was drafted in the last draft. Did not start his season off great, but is throwing this one deep. And wow, great snag there by number one. That was on our rookie safety in Jonathan Saps. And that was Jamar Chase with the snag. So not a great start for our uh, free safety, but a nice bounce back for their quarterback as they'll go with the jet sweep handoff. Number 14 powers through a man, gets them close to the goal line, down to the two ghost pickings. And that'll give them a really good, good play here. <laughs> Second and one handoff right down the middle and penalty down. Najee Harris runs the ball into the end zone, but potentially coming back. That's going to be a hold, so we'll take it. Get those points off the board. And instead, they'll be coming out for second and 11. Still a little bit of space to get the first down prior to a touchdown. I'll go with the pass to the outside and an inaccurate throw from Irons. Now third and 11. Shotgun set. Irons rolling out. We'll find a nice snag from their tight end. Is that Hawkinson? Yes, it is. In double coverage. Great jump, great land, great hands. And you honestly expect Denzel Ward and Von Bell to play that a little bit better. But now we'll come out tie game. Offense starting this time in their own territory. We'll break first tackle there. Solid first rush. Would like to see it. some balance play for sure as we have a pretty solid O-line, a good running back. But we also have a lot of good receivers that we need to uh, get the ball out to. We'll send... Our third string tight end in motion. This is going to be a run right down the middle. First down gained by Zeke Elliott. And plus, with how much we're spending on Zeke this year, he has to put a, he has to put together a good a good year. Giving him, I think it's around 17 mil this year with a franchise tag. Olave gain a six on the catch and then out of bounds. But yeah, we spent a lot of money on Zeke, so we expect him to play well. He is a superstar, so he should be able to make some good plays for us. And we saw some good plays for him last year but we just need to see some more consistent plays and getting stuffed there you expect him to get that first third and one come out here shotgun set looks like three receivers to the bottom tight end to the line up top will be a run down the middle zeke will get the first down there but not a whole lot more six rushes for him 20 yards and it looks like rookie undrafted running back Josie Love in to spell out Zeke, and he'll get the catch in about five yards. They mark a gain of four. And just like that, he heads back out and Zeke back in. Josie Love is a receiving running back, so we'll see him a lot in the shotgun set whenever Zeke needs a break. There is another catch for Garrett Wilson, first down. And we did end up staying with the same playbooks as we ran last year. I took a look at our new coordinator's playbooks, and they did not line up as... Olave not able to hold on to that one with a big hit coming in. That'll bring up second and ten as we have twins up top. Lone receiver all the way down at the bottom, I believe is our rookie. Hand this one off to Zeke down the middle who will get what he can. Gain of only two, third and eight. And now we'll go empty set. Twins up top, trips to the bottom. Rucker just off the line at the bottom of the screen. He saw Probably, yeah, definitely had the most receptions last year. Throwing out of a sack this time and out of bounds. Will possibly be a field goal attempt with Sloman. And indeed it is. Kicking about a 56-yarder. Haven't seen him hit one from this distance that I can remember. That one is low, drove, but not quite driven enough. 
I guess that works. Sloman misses his first field goal attempt of the season. And just like that, Raiders will take over as they come out with two receivers up top, two receivers at the bottom, and they'll go right down the middle. Najee Harris with a gain of maybe a couple, but I believe Jerome Baker face masked. And I was wrong. Hawkinson actually with a holding. I'll take it. On first and 20, they'll come out under center, two receivers up top, one to the bottom. They'll go with a stretch to the top, and we have some guys waiting. I believe that's Taekwon Lewis with the tackle gain of one. And that's how we will end the first quarter. This game tied. So far, some good plays and then some eh. Obviously, the uh, interception, then quick touchdown following the interception was great to start off with. But then the full drive that we had on offense, not great. And there goes Najee Harris with some running room. Von Bell comes over to get the tackle, bringing up third and four. And they'll come out shotgun. Two receivers to the bottom, one up top. They also have the tight end to the bottom of the line. It will be a pass. Irons scrambling around and has plenty of space to run and is juking a lot of air. And that time I think Baker definitely got a face mask. Indeed he did. He got away with it the last time, but not this time. That moves the ball down to the 22. Looks more like the 21. As they come out under center, stretch to the top. Trying to find somewhere to run, and a nice stop there from number 21, Bradley Roby. And while Bradley Roby is technically our fourth highest overall, I was not going to give him a starting spot, or I was not going to give Eli Apple the starting spot over him. So for now, Bradley Roby will stay in. We'll see what happens next year, if next year is what we end up having to uh, play. Again, the series ends as soon as we win a Super Bowl at the latest, ends after season five. First down gain there from Najee Harris. And actually our uh, rookie free safety was in on that. Jonathan Saps, I believe, or Sapp. So, making, trying to make a comeback after giving up the huge, place to, to, uh, huge play to Jamar Chase. Iron scrambling will get brought down by Pete Werner at the five. Now they come out again, shotgun set, two up top, two tight ends at the bottom. Najee Harris looking a little tired but they go instead to the bottom, and that is the second touchdown on the day for TJ Hawkinson, giving the Raiders a lead 14-7 with that made PAT. And we'll jump into a little bit of some quicker action as we get 26 yards here to Olave, followed by only two for Zeke. So, so far, passing game working a bit more, a lot more than the rushing. Passing definitely carrying us here on this drive as we get close to the 20. Rayshon Holiday with his first catch, gain of 14 and touchdown Zeke Elliott. And we will continue in with the Raiders offense out on the field in the same quicker sim here. But yeah, really, really happy with the passing offense. We would like to see Zeke run a little bit better. I mean, he did pretty good on the nine yard touchdown run as Hawkinson really killing our defense here. I think he's primarily lined up against Von, Me Von Bell and some of our linebackers. So hopefully we can find a fix for that. Huge gain there. Now inside the 15 with the 16-yard uh, pass to Will Fuller. And the Raiders get a free first down with uh, Togai, Tog Togiai. And then touchdown Keyshawn Johnson. And let's see what we can do under two minutes remaining here in the first half. We need a touchdown on the board to tie this game up. We'll start with a quick pass to Rayshon Holiday for a first down, a gain of 10 as we're in the no huddle. So far, Ritter has been pretty accurate today. Going to find Ruckert here for another first down, gain of about 14, 15 yards as we get close to midfield. At the 48 will be another pass. This one dumped off to Zeke, who makes one guy miss, but then brought down by number 20. Brings up a second and one, as we will call our first timeout. And following that timeout, we'll come out. Trips to the top, one lone receiver at the bottom. Quick pass up top, no one looking there. Miscommunication looks like between Ritter and Olave. On third and one, shotgun set. Once again, two receivers up top, one to the bottom. Will be a quick pass, Ruckert. Just, again, that communication not there, and we're punting. No, you got to go for it. You got to go for it. Instead, we'll punt this one away, and a pretty decent punt. That goes out of bounds, but an unlucky bounce will be a touchback. 
Well, hopefully our defense can keep any more points off this board for the remainder of the first half. As the Raiders get the ball at the 20, Irons looking to scramble, and he will slide down, avoiding the hit at the 27. Timeout called for the Raiders. And that leaves 37 seconds to pretty much go 75 yards. He'll drop back here. We had a pass rush, but a nice pass pickup or rush pickup from Najee Harris. First down again, Hawkinson. You know, Irons started off the day rough with the uh, drop and then the interception, but since then has played really, really well. Trying to scramble here, trying to get away. Pete Warner with the quarterback spy will bring him down after a gain of five, and that will end the first half. So some good play from us, some not so good play from us, and we'll head into halftime currently down 21-14. And starting the second half, we will have ball. We need to march down the field, get a touchdown on the board. Will be a pass here on first down. We're going to find Garrett Wilson across the middle, about a gain of 11. So far, Ritter, 12 of 16, and a touchdown, not too bad. Just need to get a little bit more. We'll come out here with a first down at the 38, empty set. Three to the bottom, two to the top. Will be a pass to the down, to the down. All the way to the bottom of the screen is what I meant to say. It looked like that was intended for Olave, but never had positioning. Second and 10, under center, will be a handoff down the middle, goes Zeke, and not very good blocking there will be a loss of one, bringing up third and 11. And on third and long, looks like Bosa in the zone at the bottom of the line. We come out with trips to the top, Ruckert just off the line at the bottom. We'll go intended for Olave, intercepted number 20. And the Raiders will take over at the 38. Intercepted by Yidem? Maybe. Probably butchered that. Well, now we put our defense in a tough spot. Start the second half for them. Already in plus territory. We'll slide over Hawkinson. Go with a run down the middle. And Togiai just got shoved off by Najee Harris. Sap does come down to get the tackle, so we're seeing Jonathan Sap play pretty well in the uh, the running game, but passing game has yet to make a play, as Hawkinson has just been next to impossible to stop so far today. Already two touchdowns, although it doesn't have it there in the little uh, stat graphic at the top of the screen. Will be another pass here, and a huge rush. Jerome Baker with the forced fumble picked up, I believe, Tyquan Lewis is rumbling and stumbling all the way down the field, and this will be a tying touchdown with a made PAT. Jerome Baker, sack, fumble, Tyquan Lewis, scoop, and score. And that is what this team needed. A little bit of a momentum swing as we'll jump in here to some quicker sim. Third and 10 and 21 yards to George Pickens. Gets them a first down and now pass midfield with the Najee Harris run. Another Najee Harris run, first and 10, pass thrown away, or pass, yeah, thrown away. Second and 10, another throw away, bringing up third and 10. 18 yards again, George Pickens. Well, we did great on first and second down. A penalty there helps us out on Rams check. Four yards to Hawkinson, bringing second and 16. Now third and 11, and touchdown Jamar Chase. Well... So far today, the team is playing okay. We're just not getting that final play. Too many third and longs that we're giving up on defense and offense just not consistently moving the ball down the field. Solid run there. Gain of eight on the first down run. You need to see some more of that from Zeke and just some more consistency, like I have been saying. Consistency is key here and we're not having it so far. Zeke will get us the first down, but not much more. We'll now come out here with a bit of a tight shotgun set to the top, one to the bottom. Zeke in the backfield will head out and will instead go down the middle. That is Rayshon Holt, and that is not a fumble by any means. Luckily, Zeke picks it up, so either way, we'll hold on to it. But that will go down as a fumble for the rookie, even though it wasn't. First and 10, though, will be an awkward Fullback block almost runs into Ritter, but we'll get a gain of two. Bringing up second and eight, we come out shotgun set. Two to the bottom, one up top. Will be a pass. Ritter looking for something. We'll check down, no throw out of bounds. 
And on third and eight, we'll come out three to the bottom. Ruckert lone up top on the line. Will be a pass Ritter waiting. Pass rush coming in and a sack. Number 98, Mathis. And let's see if our defense can get a stop, because if they can't, this game probably out of reach. Fuller with 24 yards on second down, 19 to Pickens. Looks like our DBs are struggling today. Najee Harris gets a gain of nine. Five more yards to Jamar Chase. And then a sack, Tommy Togiai. Good, we need to see him get some sacks this year as he's one of our nickel guys. And Sam Hubbard with another sack. will force a field goal that is made. Ten-point game. So now it's do-or-die time for our offense. We need a quick score, get the ball back, get a stop, and another score. We will find Garrett here for a gain of nine. Garrett Wilson, that is. Bringing up second and one, staying out, shotgun set. Hurry up offense, I believe, but now we're killing some time. There we go. Snap the ball, looking for something downfield. Pass rush coming in, and you took too long there, Ritter. Too long. And now with third and long, something I don't think we've really been able to complete this game, even though the Raiders definitely have. We'll go up top, and... Okay, maybe I just need to talk bad about us, and we'll make some plays. Olave in tight coverage. Holds on to that one. First down with about four minutes left. And again, we're needing ten points to tie. Only now moving up to the 37, so we need a lot more yardage here. Throw away. No, out of bounds. No, caught and then out of bounds. Gain of five. Again, Olave. Good read there from Ritter under pressure. Second and five. Three up top, one to the bottom. Be a quick pass across the middle. Completed again, Olave. Receiving a lot of targets in that slot roll. And you again come out with the trips to one side. Ruckert at the bottom of the line. So far, haven't seen much of Zeke this second half, and that one broken up intended for Holiday. Second and 10, two to the bottom, one up top, some more shotgun set. Three minutes, 14 seconds left on the clock. Needing a touchdown as quickly as possible. And there is Curtis Samuel in for his first play. We'll get some yardage, bringing up third and four. Now under three minutes, three to the bottom, one up top. Ritter will take the snap. And will not be a quick pass. Instead, down the middle goes Jarrett. Jarrett. Wow, Garrett Wilson inside the 20, down at the 18. No time to celebrate. Get to the line, my man. And after wasting some time, just a few, about 10 seconds before the two-minute warning, we'll finally snap the ball. Ritter, chilling. Still chilling. We're still chilling. Now we're finally going to throw it. Outside, caught Ruckert, but inbounds. Could have had one extra play there, but two-minute warning hits. We still need those 10 points. Following the two-minute warning, bunch to the top. Olave lone to the bottom. And Ritter will throw the ball out of the back of the end zone. Bringing up second and goal. Same formation. Please don't be the same play. <laughs> it might actually be the same play. Ritter under pressure and sack Nick Bosa. Leaves a third and goal from the 15. A minute and a half left. And intercepted. Nail in the coffin. Still running. Down to the 20. Brought down Hobbs with the INT. You saw what Ritter was looking for there. That ball needed to be a little bit higher. Pass thrown a little too low. Interception. And that will end this game. Well... We came close several times, started the game off really well. Just weren't able to consistently get stops on defense or move the ball on offense. Raiders will come away with a victory week one. And as we see the stats, I mean, yeah, all in favor of the Raiders. About 100 more passing, about 60, 70 more rushing. Equal takeaways. Yeah, I mean, the Raiders played a better game. Well, not the victory we were looking for week one but we saw some promise seems like the secondary is struggling a little bit so we'll see how that goes for the first few weeks here and maybe make a decision maybe after the baltimore game let's sim on over to week four and maybe catch a little bit of the second half 
of that Baltimore game. And here's a game to help boost our morale. Offense, really a, a shootout here. We get the victory in OT, 42 to 36. Defense still struggling. We'll see what they're struggling with when we look at the stats here. But so far, at least at 500. Desmond Ritter, 332 yards, three touchdowns, did throw one interception, but was not sacked and completed 86% of his throws. Really good game from him. However, we did give up 333 passing yards, two touchdowns through the air as well. So still looks like we're struggling in the uh, pass coverage, but also we struggled mightily here against Jonathan Taylor. 17 carries, 134 yards, two rushing touchdowns. Zeke had 18 for 85 and a touchdown. We also gave up 39 more yards and another touchdown to Benny Snell. And then looks like for us, Trey Sermon got two rushing touchdowns. So at least some rushing touchdowns for us on the day, but we're still giving up a lot of points. And Cortland Sutton destroyed us. So definitely our DB struggling. 186 yards, one touchdown on nine catches. For us, Garrett Wilson is stamping his spot as our number one receiver for sure. Nine catches, 126 yards. Rayshon Holiday in his second game, though. Two touchdowns on 88 yards, six catches. Rucker was our number three guy with 69 yards on six. Deguara got a touchdown, 31 on two. And then Chris Olave, only 18 on two. And Zeke had one catch for no yards. So, not great there. As for defense, Pete Werner led us with 15 tackles. Really good from him. He also, as well as Sam Hubbard, led us in tackles for loss, both with four. Davon Hamilton had three, and then Denzel Ward, Jerome Baker, Tyquan Lewis, and Jonathan Cooper each had one tackle for a loss. And then only one sack, this time to Hamilton, so he had a pretty solid game. And we were four for four on extra points, no field goals attempted. So I feel like for the next couple games, we might need to make a change around with our DBs, primarily our corners. So for the first couple games, we've had Denzel Ward and Bradley Roby on the outside with Jeff Akuda in that slot spot. Eli Apple has been our four with Kendall Sheffield at five. And maybe the problem that we're having is Bradley Roby. I can't say for sure, but Denzel Ward seemed to play okay, did give up that one touchdown week one. But Bradley Roby seems to maybe be the odd guy out. I would think maybe send him down to that three spot. See how that goes for the first couple games. That way, if they're ever just out in two tight end or two receiver set, it's Jeff Okuda and Denzel Ward. And Okuda, what is his press? His press is an 83. So third best on the team. Bradley Roby does have better, but doesn't have as good cover stats. So for now, we will go along with Denzel Ward and Jeff Okuda as the top two. What is the tackling? Akuda's definitely the better slot guy. Technically Denzel Ward is, but he's for sure playing on the outside. Block shedding wise, Bradley Roby isn't bad, just the tackling is not there. I think we'll keep Jeff Akuda, at least for now, in the slot. But if we continue to have problems with Bradley Roby out there, maybe we end up trading him and Eli Apple gets the start, or Kendall Sheffield. We'll see, but for now, that is the adjustment we're gonna make. And unfortunately, in week three, defense falls apart in the fourth quarter, and we allow the San Francisco 49ers to get their first win on the season with an 18-point comeback victory, beating us 25-21. Hopefully, it wasn't due to the passing game, otherwise, Maybe we'll have to make some adjustments for sure. Desmond Ritter, though, 248 yards, two touchdowns, no sacks, completing 67%, not awful. Trey Lance, 180, one touchdown, one sack, 72%. So it doesn't look like they have a huge passing game. Zeke carries 62 yards, 16 carries. Trey Lance was their number one rusher, but Henderson did get the touchdown on the board for them. As for us, Trey Sermon does get another rushing touchdown. Five carries, 21 yards. And their fullback, Xander Horvath. Horvath. 
Harvath? Horvath? I don't know. That name's probably going to get me in trouble. Six carries, 15 yards, one touchdown, and then nothing else for anyone else. In terms of receiving, Chris Olave puts together his first big game. 81 yards, two touchdowns on seven carries. But Garrett Wilson, still right up there. 79 on six. Mike Gesicki, solid. Ruckert, solid. And then any other touchdowns down the board? Yes, one for Allen Robinson, his only catch. So, I don't know. Like, we didn't have turnovers, right? No one fumbled. And we didn't have any interceptions. So, I don't know how exactly the 49ers came back. Wish we had a better breakdown in terms of uh, scoring. But Jerome Baker led us with tackles with 12. Devon Hamilton led us in tackles for a loss with three. Also had one for Baker, Werner, Hubbard, and Tyquan Lewis. And again, only one sack today with Sam Hubbard. We need to get some more consistent pass rush, and I already said no interceptions. And then three for three on extra points, no field goals attempted. But we, we crumbled in the fourth quarter. We had a 21-7 lead, and then we gave up 18 points. Got to do better. And we will wrap up this episode by watching a bit of the game here against the Ravens. Both teams, one and two. We're technically in second place in the AFC North behind the Steelers. Steelers won the Super Bowl last year, so they're the team to chase. And if we could get a victory here today, we'll stay above. We'll stay at least in front of the Ohio Bowl already this year where the Browns also one and two. But will keep us in second place and give us a fighting chance. So, before we jump in, though, got a couple things to look at. Coach, your team has struggled out of the gate so far, and when that happens, a lot of blame is usually placed on the quarterback. Who needs to step the team? The defense has been a huge problem. The age-old saying is that football is a team game. We win as a team, we lose as a team, and we take blame as a team. No one player can pull us out of it, and I didn't get to read the, the rest, but we need to beat the Ravens. And unfortunately for us, the Ravens quarterback is Josh Allen. Coach, stopping a dynamic, dual-threat quarterback like Josh Allen has proven difficult for many teams. Where does the game plan start for a player like him? you got to stop his arm. He is one of the best arms in the league. He is a quarterback, so the first focus always has to be the passing game. That's where the big damage will come from. And if you focus too much on his legs, he'll get burned. I'm assuming it said over the top. Beat the Ravens and hold them to less than 250 yards passing. It's something we have not been able to do for most of the games this year. But we will have a plus three to man and zone this week. So that should hopefully help out. It looks like it's going to be raining for the entire game this week and probably won't take long for the conditions to get pretty sloppy. What is our plan on offense? I think we got to give it to Zeke. Let the man rumble. With a slick football and rough footing, it's going to be hard to establish a good rhythm in the passing game. So practice your handoffs because we're going to be doing a lot of it this week. Beat the Ravens, rack up 150 rushing yards. And we are jumping in here to the second half of what looks like it be a pretty sloppy game. Baltimore up very solidly right now, 17-0. We're starting with the ball in the second half. Only the fifth carry so far for Zeke, in which I said run the ball a lot. Four times is not a lot. And we immediately come out in a spread shotgun, although it's, it's more of a tight shotgun set here. Two to the top, one to the bottom. Is it going to be a pass to the top? That is for Garrett Wilson. Only the ninth pass attempt, so we really just haven't even had the ball much at all on offense. Only two care, or two catches for Wilson for seven yards, so I don't even know what this offense has been doing. Maybe that. Ritter seven for 10, or seven of 10 on 55, or 455, wow. <laughs> we'll go for another pass here, and how do you miss that? Well, I could safely say it just looks like our offense has played awful today. 17 to 0. Score remains as number 17 throws this ball deep. And yeah, we just got mossed. I kind of have a feeling I know how this game's going. Uh, just one of those days, I guess. Baltimore has uh, over 100 yards in uh, rushing or passing. 
Couldn't, couldn't really exactly tell as there's a flag at least. Maybe that'll help us out. They had another completion there for a first down to 18. And at least this will back him up. Holding on Ryder. We'll bring up first and 20 at the 45, but the rain does not appear to be affecting Allen. He's playing pretty well. Has his X-Factor abilities on fire right now. As he's going to scramble out. Get about all the lost yardage, bringing up a second and 11. And on that second and 11, they have, it looks like, two receivers to the bottom. Fullback also in the backfield, as that is who they're going to find. Bringing up a third and six with a gain of five. And they'll come out shotgun set. Two to the bottom, one up top. Looks like they might have uh, Kyle Pitts at tight end. That's who they go for. They'll get the catch, but not a whole lot after the catch, but an injury here for us in Hamilton. And as it looks for now, he is headed to the locker room. May not be returning in this game. And they'll send the field goal unit out to make this a 20-0 game. And the snap is up. Kick is through. Yes, it is 20-0. And we did get an update on Hamilton, and it was a dislocated thumb. So he has the potential of getting back in there. A huge penalty here and there for, or, yeah. Huge penalty from Preston Smith helps us move the ball down the field a bit. Here comes the running when we're down 20 to nothing. I guess it's fine. I'd like to see us just get some points on the board, but a penalty on Corey Lindsley not going to help out. First and 20, Desmond Ritter gets a gain of two. And then another penalty on Taylor Decker. Second and 23, we run the ball. Third and 17, 13 yards, Miles Garrett at least puts us in field goal range. But instead, we passed it. Honestly, I think I would have rather taken the three points there, but uh, whatever. I, guess, I mean, a touchdown would have been nice as well. Another first down gain there, Josh Allen. As he continues to march down the field, third and seven. And we will get the stop as we start the fourth quarter. Let's see if maybe now we could put something together as we're in the fourth quarter down 20. We gave up 18 points in the fourth last game. Maybe we could get 20 ourselves. And if we don't pass the ball on the guy who was on the ground, sack us. Doesn't seem like it's going to be a promising sign. Second and 23. Two to the top. Two to the bottom. Zeke in the backfield. Desmond Ritter setting up the screen pass. We'll find Zeke. And we'll maybe get a gain of a few. Bringing up third and 18. We do have two to the top, one to the bottom. Ruckert also at the line to the top. Going to need a huge play here, and nope. I have a feeling we might just need to sim this one on through, but fourth and 18. Let's see if we can get the conversion here. Will be a drop back. Pass thrown deep. This time knocked away. And with this game going as it is, we'll just quick sim to the end. And we are getting blown out and have been blown out. 34 to 0. That is bad. And in this awful game, Desmond Ritter threw 151 yards, no touchdowns, one interception, and completed 64% of his passes. In the running game, 11 carries, 70 yards, no touchdowns. Ritter, three carries for seven yards. Receiving-wise, Chris Olave, 62 yards. Wilson, 41. Holiday with 24, 11 for Zeke, and one catch for 13 yards for Curtis Samuel. We also had Taylor Decker give up three sacks in this game, so that probably didn't help very much either. On defense, though, Akuda and Baker led us in tackles with eight. We had... Five tackles for a loss, Warner, Hamilton, Togiai, ha uh, Hubbard, and Roby. And we had a combined one sack between Jonathan Cooper and Jeff Akuda. And that's definitely not a good game to end on. But we at least have started off this season better than we did the first season. The first episode of gameplay, really, in, in season one, we did not win a single game. We are one in three. So there is that. Off to a better start, just that last game really bad. And because of that, we're going to have a minus five play rec for the next game, as well as a minus three for run block power and finesse. So not great, but 
still a better starting off point. Next episode, we'll continue on, probably get through about week eight or so. And in next episode as well is the first battle of the Ohio Bowl for this year against the Cleveland Browns, who currently are one and two. So hopefully we could get some things turned around next episode. The defense definitely still needs some work. Offense possibly needs some work as well. Might shift around some of the offensive line to help try to balance the team out a little bit. We have a pretty solid right side, but the left side is kind of weak. So might move some guys around there, help just try to balance out the line across the board. But either way, we cannot afford any more 34 to zero losses. So hopefully that ends with this episode. But if you enjoyed, make sure you're leaving a little interaction here with the video, whether you want to leave a like, subscribe, or tick that bell notification to be notified of when these videos go live. I'd greatly appreciate it. As I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, last week we passed 50 subscribers, now on our way to 100. So if you want to be a part of that 100, make sure you are subscribing. Very much appreciate you guys joining. And I while recording this, I did get a notification that we are getting the place that we wanted. So Soon, early October, we will be moving. We will be getting a unique or specific office place in that place. Yeah, a lot of places there. But I will have an office in our next place, so backdrop will no longer be a bed. That means the dogs might not be in the background or the cat, but we'll at least have some things in the background that are a little bit more, like, backgrounds. <laughs> you know, So that is great. I thank you guys for joining and until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.